don't think anyone could have predicted that he was going to be so much of a flop. He was a complete waste of money. That's a flop. That's funny. That's a flop. First thing that comes to my mind, uh, Andy Cowell. Let's face it, from day one it never looked like a comfortable fit. Well, I do feel sorry, I have to say for Carroll a little bit in all of this, because he didn't decide the fee. He didn't decide that he was going to be a £35 million player. Liverpool was selling Fernando Torres for £50 million. the whole world knew, and Newcastle knew, so they pushed the price up and up. I think the first bid was about £20 million. Andy Cowell probably never got a, got a look in there. Brian Rodgers came to the club six months after he signed. Um, he made it pretty clear from an early uh, time that um, he's not in his plans. I felt a bit of Andy Cowell because he arrived at Liverpool mm. and he immediately got injured. So he was on the back foot a bit. Everyone knows when you come back from an injury it takes you three, three months to get over that and get into your stride. Uh, and then sometimes it's hard to get out of that little trench that you've built for yourself. But Andy Carroll going to Liverpool, I think that's a flop. I just think they just bought the wrong person. This one came on the stroke of midnight, right? And I remember waking up in the morning and seeing that Rubinho had joined Manchester City. And I couldn't help thinking, it's like when you wake up after going to a nightclub and you find a receipt in your pocket for eight Jaeger pumps that you bought a five to two. Manchester City's Abu Dhabi owners have just bought the club. They wanted a huge marquee signing on the last day of the transfer window. And they ended up with Rubinho, who had been desperate to leave Real Madrid. Now, is that a transfer flop? Or is that someone just realising this place is a toilet. The problem was that um, you know the English game is very different to the one played in Italy or Spain, and um, I think he found it hard to adapt to the pace of the of the game. Maybe the mentality of Robinho, which is very relaxed, you know, with the, the, the idea of uh, enjoying his football, but also his life and sunshine and no rain and all that together, and probably even the team maybe not performing. At, and his best, uh, influencing him not being the player that everybody expected. I think a lot of Varane's problem initially came that uh, people weren't really watching a lot of Italian football at the time. So he was been built up in the press as one of the best players in the world. You know, this was probably another uh, signing, or one of the few signings uh, Ferguson did, uh, which didn't go to plan. You wonder whether it's just whether they fit in with the rest of the dressing room. Whether it's just a matter of that, whether they put someone else's sort of nose out of joint. Well, Veron was and still is a beautiful footballer, a brilliant footballer, and he showed glimpses at Man United and indeed at Chelsea, but it never quite worked out for him. Maybe it was the pace of the Premier League. Remember that Saturday evening BBC, show, what was it called, Hole in the Wall? <laughs> Where that thing goes across. Well, it's that, there's that in Ibrahim. There's a Barcelona shaped hole in the wall, and they're all the same what, size. They just it's all big helping nose, through the wall. But big it's nose it. shaped hole. It just hole. didn't fit in. It's just the wrong signing for the wrong people. And again, you wonder if did the owners of the club do that? Because he certainly he didn't get on with Pep Guardiola at all. Did he? Messi's the golden boy of Barcelona. He can do no wrong, and especially under Pep. He was viewed as this sort of uh, untouchable entity that nobody else could be accommodated in the side form. That didn't go down well with Zlatan because yeah. this is a guy who, who, who likes things his own way, likes the ball played around him. It's one of them big fish in a small mm. sea. And he's, if anyone's got a big of a, opinion of himself, it's, it's, it's Zlatan. I remember when Mendieta went to Lazio for that amount of money, I was thinking, oh my God, that's a bad deal. £42 million pounds for Mendieta to Lazio. They must have looked through the books after he left and just went, oh my God. Fantastic player, but the kind of player he is, he needs to fit into a team he may not have had at Lazio. I just feel with Mendieta that he was someone that couldn't really move out of his comfort zone. Everybody was excited at the time that he comes, but you just need to look at the um, what he's done afterwards. I think he's been a disappointment ever since uh, he went for that uh, with a big reputation to Betty Seville and he, he never really lived up to it. Danielson, world record fee for a player who, when you look back now, I mean, what do you remember him for? A NICAD. A NICAD. They didn't have YouTube videos in day, those days, but Danielson was sold pretty much on the basis of the famous Nike Pogo Benito video in the airport. Full of flicks and tricks, but an absolutely terrible player when it came to it. Danielson is, is one of those players who's just bought on the back of a video, isn't he? Yeah. And hoping it's going to work out. And well, it but, work but, out like but that's the way a lot of players are sold now, like Michael Owen 
But wasn't it when Michael Owen was coming to the end of his contract at Newcastle, he actually got a brochure made up, yeah. a little Michael Owen brochure <laughs> with a, like a floppy disc on the front. You could, you could play. I mean, this is what I've done. Like people in front going, yes, Michael Owen. <laughs> we know he is. It's just not very good home, anymore. Isn't it? You know when people see players out, they go, oh, so and so, get him a drink. It's Carol, get him a drink. Torres go, come here, mate. <laughs> Give you a hug. <laughs> I feel your pain, man. Since Torres moved to Chelsea, there's one incident in particular that kind of symbolises his entire time there. Now, we played against Man United at Old Trafford. I think it was to win the game or two, to draw a level in the last 10 minutes. Puts the ball around David De Gea, has a nice little finish on his left foot, what's he did? It got to a point where the whole nation actually felt sorry for Torres. That's how that's how bad he was doing. The Chelsea fans expected the same Torres uh, Liverpool head or Liverpool saw when he first came to the club, and clearly uh, he's not been the same player since. Well, the most serial flop, I suppose, the clubs he's had has got to be Nicholas Anelka. Nicholas Anelka's searing pace and his eye for goals it caught everyone's eye. He made this huge, big money move to Real Madrid. His career went downhill after that. It never really happened for him in the, in the Bernabeu. He never coped with the expectation at Real Madrid, never reproduced that form. He had a lot of clubs throughout his career and he never really seemed to settle apart from Arsenal. As soon as he left Arsenal, uh, on, a, on a yearly basis, uh, he, he changed clubs. How many clubs did he have? Oh, God, no. I reckon Anelka only has an overnight bag. He must turn up in a caravan. <laughs> <laughs> Full Sierra with a caravan on the back. Sitting a lay-by outside a club somewhere with, it, with an old settee. One of the biggest transfer flops of all time, Andrei Shevchenko's move to Chelsea. Jose Mourinho, the Chelsea manager at the time, didn't even want him, had no interest in Shevchenko. But Roman Abramovich wanted Shevchenko, they were good friends, they got on well. Shevchenko was hung out to dry at Chelsea, wasn't he? He was bought by the chairman, yeah. not played by the manager. Really felt he was perfect proof that Abramovich was stick to financing the club and not managing the club. I don't think Abramovich bought Shevchenko for goals or football ability at all. I think he wanted some ears in the dressing room. I think he was his he was his inside man. You reckon? Yeah, he was Abramovich. He's, he's Edward Snowden of the Chelsea of the Chelsea <laughs> dressing room, grassing everybody else up. You know, when when things start coming out that there is rumours and a player needs to play because of whatever reason and it's too expensive and then when he plays of course things happen and it doesn't go your way it's always difficult look in this case there was no indication whatsoever that this was going to be a flop transfer i mean what you had was the best player in the world transferring to the biggest club in the world there was no reason in the world why this could, could fail what's happened everyone knew he had passed it by then he'd lost his pace couldn't beat a man anymore, an absolute disaster for Kaka. As an offensive midfielder, you probably have your best years when you're 20, between 24 and 27, so um, yeah, not the player's fault, but I think Real Madrid paid far too much money. Once the media decide that that person is a flop, it's very difficult to come back from that. I think he had very, very little impact uh, at Real Madrid in the time he was there, left on a free now, so it was a, a very expensive mistake.